don't bother about takeaways tonight, don't you bother at all. We've got Susie Lee, she's in the kitchen today. <laughs> with something so much better, haven't you? Peking beef, thank you for having me back on. Oh, thank so, you for having me. So, I am going to show you a super easy takeaway classic. I'm going to start with the sauce first. Um, oh, and brilliant. people don't really realise how simple this is, but we're using... Is this like crispy shredded beef? Yes, oh, very much I've so. I've always wanted okay. to learn how to make this. Right. This is going to be great. So, cheap vinegar. We're talking, yeah. you know, clear... Dirty vinegar. Yeah. 39p kind of bottled vinegar. Dirty the better. <laughs> Dirty. Dirty vinegar. Some sugar. <laughs> And then tomato puree. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So vinegar all... and tomato puree. So if you that. do not have, this is my top tip, if you don't have these separate, the vinegar and the tomato puree, ketchup. Right. Use okay. ketchup. Stick it in. Stick Brilliant. it in. And the, to make the flavour of the Peking sauce, you're adding hoisin, a sauce and five spice. And that's yeah. it. But see this base? That yeah. is actually sweet and sour sauce. This is really? what I did no. the other day. So Vinegar really... and tomato puree. So simple. Yeah, and sugar. That's it. Brilliant. So, we're just mixing that through, then we're adding the five spice. It's so good, by the way. Thank you. I'm yeah. sorry I've started already, I was really hungry. And then uh, some salt. Get involved, so babes. Get involved. We Dancing let this bubble away. To get out of me. <laughs> and we're going to add some water. And... So, a little touch of water there. Yeah. So, if you like want it, it thicker, don't add the water, but if yeah. you want it slightly runnier, then just uh, oh, I can add smell more. That already. Yeah. It's delicious. Uh. So, we're just going to let that simmer away, and then we're going on to the beef. So, we've cut the beef into just little strips. Yeah. But you can use chicken, prawns, meat alternative, meat alternative, yeah. or just vegetables. So, to this... This is what, um, what sort of... If you are using beef, what do you think is the best for this kind of... Oh, quick, is so... Is it like a quick fry thing? Quick fry thing, or just buy, like, a rump steak. So, it's, a rump steak. Yeah, just cheap and cheerful. And is that best for quick frying? Yeah, and also, it's a really good quality meat as well. So yeah, because you can't definitely... be too tough, can it? You've got... No, if you exactly, it quick. so a rump steak actually is... You know, your cheaper version. If you're really got a good budget, go for the fillet steak. But okay. if you don't, you know, go for the rump steak. Still going to be nice, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So that's some pepper, some white pepper, some salt, and the corn flour. This is the key to velvetizing the meat. I know it sounds a bit strange, but it gives it a coating that keeps the meat nice and corn flour. Sort of like moist and just really tender inside. Right. So a little bit of sesame oil, some soy sauce, and we're just going to mix this. So. I would Chinese, mix it in Chinese cooking, is, is sesame oil the, mo the main oil that you fry with? Or? No, actually, it's, it's a sort of a, more of a seasoning because it has quite a low boiling point, so right. it would burn. So you would actually always cook with a vegetable oil uh -huh. or sunflower oil. Yeah. So you just marinate this, and I would leave this for about 10 minutes. Okay? Oh. Yeah, because it just gives it time for the corn flour to be absorbed around the edges. Yeah. Oh, I like this because it's quick. Yeah, this so then fantastic. literally you could just leave this, but you can do this the night before. OK, and then yeah. leave it in the fridge and then you can do this next stage. So I'm just going to take a couple of strips, dunk it into an egg, just beaten egg. Yeah. Um, and we're just coating it. And then this is half corn flour, well, flour, plain flour, corn flour. Put a pinch of pepper. So, just, so there's a ball. lot of corn flour in the dish, right? I love corn flour. Yeah. It's, a, it's a real Chinese secret. It makes everything kind of crispy. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. What and does it's... corn flour do that flour doesn't do? It's whatever the, the components of the, the corn, um, it just makes it... it it's crispier when you fry it, it makes okay. it crispy. Um, when you add water to it, uh, it makes a paste and you can thicken salt yes. with it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, I never know whether to use it like, if I'm just dusting, like, a fish fillet or a chicken fillet or something. Do that instead of plain flour. Really? Mm -hmm. OK. It gives it a it's really more good... crispy. Thing. Exactly. So I'm literally dunking this in, we're tossing it. It is so crispy then, as well. Is it? Oh, I'm going to try it now. I'm getting involved. Adding that to my pile of beef. And then I've got some oil here. And I'm going to just fry a couple of strips mm. off. And really good. That yeah. is lovely. So, like so you're going to fry it, but deep fry it, right? Yeah, so you can do it shallow fry, but we're running out of time sometimes. So we can do this. Or you can air fry this as yeah, well. Right. Um, and if you really want a cheat, for this, you, you can buy pre-made, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the pre-battered stuff if you want, or if you want it super healthy, then don't do this frying stage. But it's so easy to do, like the batter. That it's like... Yeah, as you can see, it's so easy. And actually, you can sort of cook this part way and put it, let it cool, put it in the fridge and have it the next day, put it in the oven, heat it through, and it gets super crispy. Right. I love the idea of an air fryer to do it as well. Yeah. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Isn't it? Got an air fryer. Yeah, my son uses it all the time. 
A friend of mine has one. Chicken she in swears it. by it. Yeah, me too. You should get one. Okay. Have you not got one? Yeah. Oh, they're brilliant. You love go. it. Yeah. Anyway, over so, to you, Susie. <laughs> with the vegetables die, I have literally just flash fried some onions, peppers, and carrots. But you can use courgettes or whatever you want that's left over in your fridge or larder. Yeah. So I just love to just flash fry them and to speed things along, I would have added a splash of water to this with a bit of oil and just soften them down a bit. So my sauce is pretty much there. What are the traditional vegetables in, in Chinese cooking to cook with? Is, oh, it's, is, it, is it the stuff we eat over here? Is it the it carrot and the mosh too? Yeah, or is it different? so like, I mean, there's also things such as um, like, in our household, broccoli and things like that would have been used. Chinese cabbage, yeah. but you know, life so, is about you know using up what's. So what whatever you've got in the fridge works, yeah. yeah? Absolutely. So I'm just bringing this up to. Got a lovely a sweet taste to this. Yeah. Very sweet. So Delicious. the longer you cook this, the more reduced and more sticky and just really tangy mm -hmm. flavour comes through. So once it starts to bubble like this... So where does that sweetness toss, come from? Where's, where's so that that's sweetness? the sugar. That's the sugar and a bit of the hoisin sauce has been... Um, um, gives it that kind of like right. slight different kind of... And the five spice gives it that kind of slight... It's almost honey, isn't it? It tastes almost yes. like it's honey. Yeah. It's lovely. So I'm going to toss this through with this larger spoon. So you just spoon. bang it in. Yeah, and then literally... Because you don't want everything to get a wee bit wilted or, you know, soggy. Oh, look yes. at that. So you just toss it through. So if you add a bit of chilli, then you can get this oh, kind of like we? a... Can we put a bit of chilli in that? Yeah. yeah, and then it gets really spicy. Oh, there's and your then, rice. There sorry, you I go. splashed you there. That's all right. That looks great. Susie, look at that. <laughs> and do you know what? It tastes healthier. Does, doesn't it? Than a Chinese. Well... Would it be? Well, we can use, like, a sugar alternative. Uh, to obviously well, reduce just, the sugar. You have to put the sugar in. Yes, because it gives it that that kind of that's how it's reduced, and that's where okay. you're getting that kind of caramelised flavour. I think you just need to embrace it. Yeah, or you can use, you know, that's why I said if you're using the ketchup, then you can use look um, at that the Finish reduced dish. salt and sugar one. Any uh, specific rice you like to use with it as well? Basmati. Always, always basmati. basmati. Always basmati. Yeah. None of this. Well, I do you like jasmine this. rice as well? Yes, but the same. That's near enough the same kind jasmine of breed. Jasmine rice is lovely. Yeah. It's got and then with rice, you just you got any special like secrets in terms? Of yeah. So it's the evaporation method. So rinse off any starch about three times in cold water, then put enough water. It doesn't matter what size of pot or whatever to the middle that the middle finger knuckle. Mm -hmm. Then you just let it boil up. Let it evaporate. Absorb. And then switch off the heat, put a lid on it, and it's done. Come back immediately. <laughs> Don't pick up your children and then get back on a flight and come back. <laughs> no problem. On Monday. Thanks, uh, Susan. For details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free this morning app. Thank you.